Hi everyone, Thomas here from 44 Wide and welcome to part three of our Gigapan video where we are going to sit here and join together our 220 individual images and how we actually get all the files together to make one big print. So as you can see here, here's our 220 images opened into Lightroom. Now there's a few things I, I do when we get everything loaded up. Uh, what I call it is a flat process, if you will, to make all the individual files nice and even. Uh, so they'll stitch together with no seams. And the first thing I do is I try to identify just visually what I deem to be the brightest frame. So I would say this one here is a pretty good example. And if I go over to develop and we look at what we're dealing with in terms of overexposure, I can actually recover that pretty well. And that's all I'm interested in doing. I zero the blacks down here. And the other thing is we want to set a custom white balance that will then apply to all the images. And the other thing I do is I come down here and turn on um, the lens correction. So with that done, we then apply those settings universally across all 220 images. And then the other thing I should mention that I also do, on all of the frames that are strictly clouds, I'll come in and do my dust spot correction I do all the dust spot removal on the cloud-based images where there's no structure, no trees or anything, and then I can apply that across, which saves me a lot of time in post. Any shots like this one, though, where the towers come in, I don't turn on the dust correction. I'll go in and manually um, do those later. So with the files all ready to go, we then take them into, or sorry, we then export them. And what we're looking for is a 16-bit TIFF, uncompressed. Um, if you look over here, I have a preset called uh, TIFFs for PT GUI. As you can see, it's Profoto RGB workspace, 16-bit. And we'll export all of those images out. And then, uh, for the sake of the video and to save some time, I'll uh, not bother with PT GUI. That's a whole other video segment easily, or a few part video probably. But in essence, now that all the files are the same, we put it into PT GUI, stitch them all together, and then I open that file into Photoshop, and we're getting close to our print ready file. If I, here it is here. So this is seeing it together for the first time. Now, when I'm printing a file this large, an issue I run into is Lightroom can't actually take this file in at full size. So what I need to do, if I want to use the creative adjustment tools within um, Lightroom, is I actually break the, that finished image up into four segments. So let me just show you here. Ah, OK. So here they are here. So these are the final stitched together pieces. Or sorry, four individual big chunks that I can import individually apply a creative setting like I've done. Let me, let me show you the before and after here. Um, so this is the file that came in that I split up into Photoshop, or in Photoshop, I should say. Uh, oh, of course, it's going to take some time to load because we're dealing with some huge files. OK, so now we have the four individual slices, and this is the way they come in. Uh, their color, of course, and my creative adjustments happen, and this is what we end up with. So now that I'm happy with that, I apply these settings across the board to the four slices, if you will, and then we export those four slices completed with their creative adjustments out and back into Photoshop, where I'll use that for the stitch, only because it's basically four giant tiles, and Photoshop is pretty decent at stitching that together. So and I breezed through most of that. I realize um, we're going to be doing some workshops. We'll go into greater detail about the minutia of actually stitching one of these together. But that's the sort of overhead view, if you will, of how you go through the, the process. And now we're ready to print out to the 11880. Um, 
this is really uncharted territory for us, and this is the actual single largest print I've ever made. Now, what I've done to help speed up the process is we've taken it down to an 8-bit file. That's okay because we're not making any more adjustments at this point. Um, you know, I always print 16-bit mode, but when it comes to a file this big, um, there's really not much to lose, seeing as how we're not making any more adjustments. And what we're going to see is it start to roll off now. 200 inches should take about two and a half hours to print. And then the next thing we'll do is uh, hang it in the gallery.